I'm Paul Brody. I live up in Canada on the West Coast. I have a 1919 overhead cam Excelsior right behind me. In 2005, I started what I call the Excelsior Project. I'm making 10 of these bikes off old photographs because there are none in the world. And this is number eight, but I've built six of them so far. I think there was only, back in that day, 1919, 100 years ago, there was only maybe three or four made. And after, after Bob Perry lost his life, the owner of the Excelsior, Ignaz Schwinn, how, how the rumor goes, he ordered the bikes smashed and, 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 and buried. I don't think all of them were, because in the years after, a few showed up at a few races, but there was no factory sponsorship. And over time, the bikes all got lost. I built a vintage road racer using an Excelsior motor, and I took that to the tracks for five seasons, and that's how the engine got developed. Because I had a, a lot of problems with the lubrication system, head gaskets, you know, there was a bunch of things going on. And so the engine is reliable now on that road racer, which has a 71 rear wheel horsepower, so it goes, it goes 130 miles an hour. This one, only has a little less than 50 horsepower because the carb is a, a Shebler, so it's it's kind of limited by how much air can go through it. But it still still goes well, and it's got a good uh, a good crack when you open up the throttle. It's got good throttle response. I got an old Excelsior crankcase, but that's one of the street uh, versions. It, it's got all the cam drive at the bottom. I cut that all off on my mill and I started fabricating. So the first bike I built, I called the mock-up. It looks like an Excelsior, but it'll never run because the engine's made out of, out of metal and Bondo, but that was to get the shape. And then I spent four months on AutoCAD figuring out how to get pistons, flywheels, oil pump, and all that inside it. I made the outside of the engine look like a 1919, but inside I made it as modern as I could. It was a huge learning curve because I had to learn how to how to build a motor. It's something I I always wanted to do since I was 18 working in an engine shop. So there was a lot to learn. There was metallurgy, there was how to how to fit everything into a certain size and choosing parts and, and cam uh, cam profiles and compression ratios. There's a lot involved in and the lubrication system ended up being the hardest part to the hardest part to figure out because most of the bikes at sounds of speed have, have total loss but this one has a recirculating oil system so the oil goes into the motor gets pumped back to the tank